Yo, what is up guys? My name is Rhino and today we're back for another Fortnite video. So as you guys know by now, you're probably fully aware we have got a new Fortnite season. Yeah, Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 3 has finally launched and I've uploaded a video on showing combos for Eternal Night. So I did buy up to Tier 100. So thank you guys so much for watching that. Thank you guys for your support. I've got more videos coming up next. But for now, we got to do what a lot of people have been wondering or what a lot of people are interested in is all the items from the Battle Pass itself. So yes, we're going to rank all of them from worst to best. So we're going to rank all the skins, back blings, pickaxes, and gliders featuring the Battle Pass from worst to best. And no, we're not including the wraps or the emotes. Um, not that I don't care for them. It's just wraps in the Battle Pass tend to be weak and emotes, I mean, people have, uh, have mixed feelings about the emotes. But when it comes to the skins, I feel like... I can give somewhat of an objective point of view with the skins, even though everyone's entitled to their own opinions and I have mine. Uh, we're going to rank them. And of course, before we do, before we get into it, I'm not going to ramble on too long. Make sure you use my code RyanGamingYT before you buy this battle pass, if you haven't yet. And you, if you want to support me, you don't have to use my code, but it'll be much appreciated if you do, because your support means a lot to me and drives me to making content like this for you guys. But if you don't want to support me, I would recommend supporting someone smaller. Thank you, guys. All right, so what do I think about this battle pass? Very solid, I would say. The uh, reception to it has been pretty polarized, I'm not going to lie. Some people have really liked it, others have really disliked it. I don't see why. I think this is the best battle pass, based off first impressions, of course. So my op opinions do change, and I am very aware that some of these opinions will change in the future. Like, some of these skins I don't like, I might like, or other way around. But based off first impressions, I think it's the best one. The Season 1 battle pass is pretty meh but then grew on me over time. Season 2 Battle Pass started off pretty good, but sort of went down on me over time, where Sky ended up being the best skin. But this Battle Pass, I think, is solid, especially the skins. So, of course, we have seven skins here, so we're going to rank them all from worst to best. Um, I don't think any of these skins are bad, to be honest, at least at the moment. I think, at worst, they're meh, but at best, they're great. So... Yeah, so at the number seven spot for the worst one, we have Scuba Jonesy. So I don't think the skin's bad. I think it's all right. I'm not really a fan of the way he looks without the mask. He just doesn't look like Jonesy. He does, but doesn't, if you know what I mean. He's like Bunker Jonesy. It's like he took his look from Bunker Jonesy, cut his beard short, and I don't know, just looks weird. But with the mask, it looks kind of cool. I mean, still... I'm not a huge fan of wearing scuba divers as skins. I would much rather wear the deep sea diver skins, deep sea dominator, deep sea destroyer. But compared to Wreck Raider, uh, Snorkel Ops, and uh, Reef Ranger, I think he's be the best one. Pretty good, I would say. Okay, moving on to the number six spot, we have Siona. And this is a skin that I could definitely see myself see growing on me over time. But I do like, again, I do like the idea she's a. Uh, you can either wear it as a casual girl or an astronaut with the helmet. But still, we've just... It, it's been... The astronauts have kind of been overdone. And sure, maybe that's the same with other things, knights. And I am fine with this skin. I don't have many problems with it. But really, I probably one of the only aesthetic problems I have is the hair. Like, four ponytails, whatever they're called. I don't know about fashion, guys. I'm a casual person. But come on. Really? But in terms of the way it looks, I think it looks really clean. I like the colors, especially that pink and blue one. And, and I like the idea of having either you can wear her like she's about to go to space and wear her like she's on Earth. I think that's pretty cool. And But still, would I see myself using this skin often? Uh, maybe in the future, but I don't know. There's just something about it that makes, me, makes it appeal to me a little bit less. Okay, moving on to the number five spot, we have Jules. And this skin gives me the impression that this is an Australian-themed season because I am Australian. She definitely reminds me of a mixture between some sort of industrial Australian trade worker and engineer, of course, and also, yeah, some Borderlands vibes, but without the apocalyptic theme. And Jules is... I'm, I'm not saying Jules is a common Australian name, but it could definitely suit the alleyway. So yeah, what do I think of this skin? Yeah, I do like it. I I did do a bit of engineering in high school. I do know a little bit about it. Um, she's more of a mechanic than an engineer, let's be honest. Even though she did construct Ohm the Owl, which is basically this season's version of Ollie. Really good. We'll get to that in a bit. The skin, I mean, I'm not crazy about the second end style with the teal coat. And maybe I just need to use this skin more. No, I have used all these skins as I'm recording this, but... 
I haven't used all of them enough yet, guys. I'm sorry. But I do think the skin's very solid. It's just... I mean, even though I am Australian, I don't really do get into mechanics so much. Um, but it's still a really cool skin. And I can definitely see it appealing to a lot of people. Definitely understand why so many people love it. Absolutely. Uh, moving on to the number four spot, we have Ocean. And this skin, she's got a bit going on for her. I really like it. She's, uh, she's very clean. She's got... Again, she's ocean vibes, sort of beach themed. I love how she's uh, in the trailer scene knocking out Sh Ghost Brutus, stealing his mask and making her own. I, I really dig it. I really dig this skin. I dig the theme. It's got a lot of colors on it. Yeah, I really like it. Uh, moving on to the number three spot, we have the meme skin, Kit. And this skin is just amazing. It's adorable. It's uh, Meowsel's baby son or daughter. I think it's son. On a uh, on some sort of mecha suit, it's a mixture between Meowsels and Kit Bash, but I think it's better than Meowsels, and I think it's better than Kit Bash. It's uh, it's adorable and yet kind of intimidating as well. And that built-in emote, oh man, that built-in emote just does it. It's the best built-in emote in the game. You have the uh, the uh, sweet and chill Kitty Kitty paws and claws songs from last season, and then just picks up into a heavy metal theme tune. And turns himself into a freaking motorcycle and starts rolling around all over the place. I mean, if you did buy all the tiers or most of the tiers like I did, big way to flex, definitely. I love it. I love the built-in emote. And the skin, I do think, is very cool. Sort of apocalyptic as well, despite what I said about jewels. And I think it's really good and really cool idea to... Really cool, unique idea for a skin. Kind of like we do see that like every second season or third season, like with Giddy Up. Or Peely, but this one's definitely unique. A baby cat controlling a robot suit. I don't know how he created it, but still, I think it's really cool. Really cute and intimidating. Uh, moving on to number two spots, we have Fade. And this is the tier one skin, and it's... I mean, I do like the first set of style. I, I like the color scheme. I like the design. My one problem with it is the hair. Just not a big fan of that macaroni and cheese-like hair. But I do like the color scheme, like I said. Uh, the second style, the mask, definitely looks nicer. But it's the third style that you get at tier 100 that does it. That third style is just so, so good. Yes, it is kind of like Drift. But in terms of Drift style, the Max style, if you compare it to Drift's Max style, I actually like it more. Purple, gray, black looks awesome. And that mask just looks so, so fire. Kind of like Ragnarok, Master Minotaur mask. It's a mixture between... Drift, Ragnarok, Master Minotaur, and uh, Stratus from the Season 9 Battle Pass. It's really freaking good. I love it. Even the first style is pretty decent, but again, not a fan of that hair. But other than that, this is the perfect Tier 1 skin. And definitely could see being the best to some of you. But in the number 1 spots, I had to cop out. I had to give it to the Tier 100 skin, Eternal Knight. And you might be thinking, oh, but this skin's lazy. It's just a female Black Knight looks bad, or a female Ultima Knight looks bad. Yeah, I could see why you'd be thinking that, but shoot me down for this. I think it's better than Ultima Knight. I really do. It's uh, I'm not saying that I like female skins any more than male skins. I do prefer both skins, either male or female skins. But I think the armor on her on Ultima Knight is just a little too bulky for me. What, it does look cool. I just never use it. Whereas on this, because it's based off the armored style Ultima Knight, I think it looks really nice, really clean. The, uh, the armor... The mask, the armor helmet is quite tall, sticks out a bit, but I do like that. I think it gives her a bit more character compared to other knights in the game, such as Black Knight, Red Knight, Ultimate Knight, or even Spider Knight. Um, and the styles, again, it's similar to Ultimate Knight. I do love Ultimate Knight, and I love how we got these styles. The shield's very nice. And the second style, the Enlightened style, it gets more and more charged up as you use it more and more, and I think that's really cool. And... Yeah, I know it's a cop-out, but I had to give it to the tier 100 skin this time. Okay, now moving on to the back bling. So we have six back blings here. One of these skins doesn't come with a back bling. At the number six spot, we have the deep dive. And this is just, it's kind of similar to the air tank. and But I actually like the air tank a little bit more because I like how it's smaller. I like how it's a bit smaller, more compact, and the shark design has. This one is bulkier, just as the air tank going. But it does have two other edit styles, which I do think are better than the default. But other than that, I'm not crazy about this back bling whatsoever. Uh, moving on to the number five spot, we have the Beach Coma. And this back bling, it's kind of a bag with different parts from the beach on it. I do like that vibe of it, the summer 
theme it's got here, which since it is basically somewhere on the other side of the world, it's uh, or where you are, I think, and because of what happened last year, this will be summer themed this season. And this is definitely a summer theme backling. Not crazy about it, but still, it's kind of nice. Uh, moving on to number four spot, we have the Ohm's Perch. And no, it's not a pet, surprisingly. Or maybe it is, but they just disguise it as a backling so they'd get more people to use it because Epic knows that people don't really use pets, despite the fact that you can pet it. Um, but it's very nice. Oh, I actually like this pet. It's not too bulky. It's unique. Mechanical owl that Jules constructed. I think it's really good. But I probably just won't use it often just because I don't use pets. But it'll probably be one of my most used pets. I don't know. Uh, moving on to number three spot, we have the Eternal Shield. And this is the shield for um, Eternal Knight. And I think it looks really nice. Very, very compact. And that's what I like about shields. Unique ones. Definitely better than the Dragon Crest because... It's got a more simplistic design, it's more compact, and it's not sideways. But I don't think I'd go as far as say it's better than the Black Shield. It's just the Black Shield, not just because of nostalgia. It looks like a classical shield with that design on it. This one has a bit more detail on it. I like how it's got most of the color and it's got, it's got that colored gemstone on the top. I think that's really nice. Maybe I'll, me or others will warm up to the shield later on. I do think it's really good, but not better than the Black Shield. Uh, moving on to the number two spot, we have the mini moon. And this is essentially the moon that Gru stole. Siona is basically female Gru because, or followed in Gru's footsteps, shrunk the moon and stole it and wore it on her back. That's what this backling is. Even though I don't typically wear spheres or blocks or rocks as backlings, I don't care. This one's very nice, very universal, got some detail on it, craters on it, just like the moon. And it spins around. I love it. But at the number one spot, easily the best back bling of this battle pass, the Infinite Bloom. And this back bling is just perfect. It's so nice. It's just, yeah, it's a flower. I'm not saying I'm typically a huge fan of flowers, but obviously the way it looks, it's got, it's sort of, uh, I love how clean it is. I like the detail on it, the design of it, how it's sort of holographic in a way. And it'll just, you can literally wear on anything. It's so small, simple, clean, detailed. It's it's a, it's a very, 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 very nice back bling overall. I love it. Okay, moving on to the pickaxes. At the number seven spot, we have the dive knives. And we had something this season where every all of these pickaxes are dual-wielded, but you have the option to use them either dual-wielded, dual a one-handed dual-wielded pickaxe, or a two-handed single pickaxe, which I think is awesome, and I think they should do that more. Even though the animation, it would take a bit longer, like... They came out with so many duelies last season, so many boring duelies. Like, and if pe there are some people who genuinely hate using duelies or don't use duelies at all, I don't see the point. And I don't see why they can't develop an extra pickaxe or just simply a bigger double-handed version of that. But for some reason, this is the only one that's not like that. It's just another simple pair of duelies, nothing special about them, pretty boring and pretty simple. But at least they're clean. But again, that's kind of the case with most of these bladed dualies. But at least they're all black, so they are pretty universal. So I will say that, but still not crazy about them whatsoever. At the number six spot, we have the wrenches. And this, based off the first style, the dual wheeler style, I think it's very nice. I love the idea of having spanners as a pickaxe. Tradey tools, I think they're really good. And the way they're designed, they look like they've been constructed from different tools. And I really like it. It's just the the other style, the single-handed style. Like, I know some people who are into mechanics are going to like it. Me, I just don't. I much prefer the wrenches. I'm going to go with the dual-wheel version of this one because it's very nice. And I just wish it had a slightly bit more aggressive sound. But still, they're cool. Uh, I think all these pickaxes are good. None of them are bad except for the dive knives. At the number five spot, we have the Reliant Blades. And again... You either use these as blades, which are pretty meh, or you can convert to a single-wielded pickaxe, which makes it look like a sword that goes with the Eternal Knight, and it looks very aggressive. Basically, a, a sword as a single-wielded pickaxe, definitely better than the dual-wielded pickaxe. It's grey and black. It'll go well with a lot, and it sounds very nice. At the number four spot, we have the Tide Axes, and these are essentially pickaxes crafted from shells, and I love it. And again, dual-wielded, non-dual-wielded. I like both. I like the sound of them. They're very good. At the number three spot, we have the Vision Strikers. And these are pickaxes that I'm either going to love or I'm going to hate later on. But at the moment now, I'm going to put them up here because I think they look very bright. They look elegant. They go with the outer space themed. 
Um, yeah, they are similar to the Cosmic Cleavers. I talk Fortnite pointed that out, but I do really like the Cosmic Cleavers, and these ones are a bit different to that. But I really like the hex form animation they've got on the top part, and just a simple design for the bottom part. Three edit styles. The uh, dualies look like the Cosmic Cleavers, while the non dual version looks a bit like the uh, Splintered Light, except it's not made of... I don't know, whatever the Splintered Light's made of. But still, it's very nice and really cool sound. At the number two spot, we have the Power Claws, and these pickaxes are awesome. Definitely sort of mechanical thing like the wrenches, and the dual wheel version kind of reminds me of these Psycho Buzz Axes. These ones are definitely more aggressive. I love the way they sound. They've got some sort of like revving sound when you're swinging them, which is awesome. And they spin very fast. They look very mean. They look like they'll kill you, which I absolutely love. And they've got some sort of apocalyptic thing. Sure, they are similar to Psycho Buzz Axes. The Psycho Buzz Axes look more like, well, axes. Well, these ones look more dangerous. And of course, again, you've got a single wheel style, which turns it more into a chainsaw. A more simple version of the Mauler, which I think looks awesome. I love it. But at the number one spot, the best pickaxe of this battle pass, the Eon Blades. And I know these are simple. The single wheel, the single style just sort of looks like the Spectral Scythe. But I don't care. They're clean. They're straightforward. They look nice, simple, color scheme, nice, subtle animation, and a beautiful animation and sound. I love them. All right, now finally, moving on to the gliders. So... These gliders, some of them are really okay, but others are really good in this battle pass. We had a lot of gliders this battle pass. It feels weird to say that. Weird that we get more gliders than pickaxes, considering when it comes to item shop items. We barely get gliders anymore because not that many people buy them. So they give this chance to put them in the battle pass to give people a reason to get them. Because Epic knows that not a lot of people are just going to buy gliders anymore. But we have nine of them, and at the number nine spot we have the top sale. And this is just... It's a glider constructor, boats. Kind of reminds me of Turk vs. Riptide's glider from Chapter 2, Season 1. Not crazy about it whatsoever, but again, it's not terrible. Uh, the number 8 spot, we have the Star Strider. And this is a glider that comes with the astronaut skin. And it's okay. It looks pretty clean. I just don't know what that all that condensed, compact material on the top needs to be. And I don't see why you want to use this glider over another one part of the same set that's so much cooler. At the number 7 spot, we have the Water Wings, and these are quite similar to the Top Sail. It's another, like, motorized boat. Or it's, but this one's actually a bit better, because I like the water contrail it has at the end with the bubbles. I think that looks really nice, and it has a nice soothing sound. But other than that, not crazy about it. Would not use it. At the number 6 spot, we have the Fishy Flyer, and this is another one of those simple default-like gliders. But it's actually got a couple of nice edit styles, and when you deploy it, it has the sound of... Uh, kit meowing or baby meowsles it's kind of cute even though i'm more of a doll person a cat person i think it's got some nice edit styles and it's kind of cute to make people want to use it a cute sound at least at the number five spot we have the blade raven and this glider it's another glider for the night skin it's not another dragon like the steel wing it's not as nowhere near as obnoxious it's quite small yet there's quite a bit going on there's so much swords that come out of there so much they would all kill you and the way they come out it sounds really nice. It's similar to the Kabutu, which is that glider for Shogun, in the way it deploys and the way it looks. It's a little bit bigger. It's more medieval themed. I like the bit, the cape that sort of hangs off of it, the color styles, and the swords that come out of them. There's more swords. They just all pop out. Really nice. At the number four spot, we have the Ohm, and this is the next Ollie. It's it's uh, Jules, excuse me, the engineer's mechanical owl pet as a glider. And if you're using this with Ohm's perch backwing slash pet, whatever you want to call it, it comes out and you just catch onto it with the uh, repair wrench, the the uh, second style of the wrenches. And I think that's a pretty cool idea. And overall, it's just a nice glider. It's so nice to have a, another bird for a glider. I love birds for gliders. This one's not massive. It's not noxious. It's quite small, actually. And it's just very nice. It has a beautiful sound as well. Uh, not better than Spirit, though. Uh, moving on to the number three spot, we have the Brella. And this is the customizable umbrella of this season. Do you have to win a game to get it? No. You just need to customize it. You need to tear up. You need to do challenges so you can unlock different parts. It's basically the Maya version this season. Instead of being able to customize a skin, you can customize your own umbrella. There's so much you can do with it. Definitely should get more of these in the future, and I love it. Love all these options. Love how we can customize things, and I love how we can customize a glider. 
an umbrella, one of the more popular gliders, if not the most popular. So I just love that. Uh, and not having to grind just to get that wind so you can get that umbrella, whether if it's good or bad of that season. It's just the same one. Uh, moving on to the number two spot, we have the Convergence. And this, it's basically an upgrade version of the Arcana. It's got more detail. It's got the shattered effects. It looks nice. It looks better than the Arcana. So rip to the people who bought that. It's just a beautiful glider overall and not too bulky, not obnoxious. It's not going to get in your way whatsoever. It's going to be very popular. But at the number one spot, we have the Comet Crasher. And this glider is just amazing. It's the Meteor from Season 3. Brings back nostalgia. And yes, you guessed it, you can stand on it. And yes, this is the other glider of the Star Strider. And it's kind of like with last season. Tiantina had this glider, a glider like this, the first glider you can surf on. And... She also had another one that's just normal, I guess for people who don't like the idea of that, but still, who doesn't like this idea? It's the next best thing from an umbrella. There's no reason to use her other glider, the Wild Blast, whatever it was called, over the, over the other one, the Kaboom. Same with this one. There's no reason to use the other glider of this one. This one's just too good. It's awesome. Probably the best one. Probably, because it's, you're riding on a Meteor. How much cooler could it get? All right, well, that pretty much wraps up the list. So if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you want to see next. Tell me what you think of this battle pass. I think it's really good. And also stay tuned for more videos. And guys, thank you so much for 4,000 subscribers. We just hit it as I'm filming this. I love you guys so much. And there'll be a video coming up for that soon. Another video to thank you guys and to give you guys some news and updates. But until then, stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.